Okay. I'm going to kick off the recording over here on this side. That doesn't mean you have to start. Maybe we should wait like two more minutes so we see more people joining in. Um, Meanwhile, um, club leaders can put in what club they're representing. So we know who is with us today. Uh, Sami, would you like me to send out one more notification in the student leaders chat inside the and other chats? Uh, sure, that'd be great. Thanks, Darren. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, thank you for joining the Springs 2022 Student Leaders Workshop. I know because we're in person, a lot of uh, leaders have questions. So this is your chance to ask and find out what are your resources for this semester. So let's see, we have Samuel from Hello, Grace from Philosophy Society. I know that we have a lot of clubs being active this semester, so which is awesome. Um, okay, Noam from Orthodox Club, Dom Dominican Student Movement, BCNSSLHA. What does that stand for? It's been minus specs. It's the um, Brooklyn College uh, Student Speech Language Hearing Association. Oh, uh, gotcha. Thanks. A computer science club. I know there's a lot of comp sci students on our campus that love this club, but. Um, L-I-N-K link. Hannah, do you want to tell us what that stands for? And then Richard from the Marketing Society. Cool. Um, but we'll go start it in about two minutes because I know everyone has a busy Friday. So I don't want you guys to, and this is recorded, so everyone will have a chance to see it. Um, NABA, do you want to tell us what that stands for, for priorities? Um, so I start from, um, A stands for NABA, National Association of Black Accountants. Oh, cool. Um, and I think you guys have, um, some really awesome events, especially, I know you guys had some events that were posted on our Instagram this, uh, semester. So that's great. Um, and Louie has joined us from GS. So, so, which is great. Hi, Louis. Thanks for having me. Hi, guys. Oh, voice. All right, so I'm going to get started. Um, I'm just going to, okay, got it. All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining the Spring 2020 Student Leaders Workshop. Uh, I was just asking everyone to put in what club they're representing, and we have some awesome representatives with us today um from different clubs and i i'm gonna get started all right so first off we want to talk about the undergraduate student government aaron would you like to tell us about what usg is oh okay i didn't know i had a part but okay hi everyone um undergraduate student government um okay so undergraduate student government is the main place where all the clubs are under kind of like the uh, um, think about it as a kind of like umbrella kind of like thing. Um, so the undergraduate student government doesn't only deal with clubs, but right now we're in a student leader workshop. So we're going to also discuss that. But um, in general, we uh, do legislation. Uh, so if anybody comes to our Senate or cabinet meetings, you're going to see over there that we pass uh, resolutions um, about uh, any topic that you can think about. It could be uh, uh, initiatives that are coming in from NYPIRG. It could be initiatives that are coming in from student leaders. Um, but that's the part of the legislation. We have the advocacy kind of like part. So um, there's a lot of committees um, that we call USG governance or BC governance. Um, so for example, in, in, in Brooklyn College, we have a shared governance thing. And the way that it works is uh, there's a policy council, there's 10 administrators, there's 10 faculty, and then there's 10 students. So student government is the one that appoints the 10 students, and then we get to decide the policy that happens on, on campus in the capacity. We only have a third of the vote. Um, we also host uh, uh, in-person events. Um, you might see us, uh, you might have gotten invited uh, earlier to movie night on the quad, um, finals and chills, um, but we have all kinds of stuff that are coming up, and you will all be invited to that as well. Um, we're also um, in charge of the student activity fee. So all of you may, have, uh, may know that you're paying, I think $114.85 student activity fee. Now that student activity fee doesn't go 
all of it to student government. I believe less than $10 goes to student government. Uh, but let's go say $20 goes to the health clinic, $10 goes to the Magna Career Center, if I'm not mistaken, another $18.60 goes to athletics. Basically, there's a breakdown of the student activity fee, and we're supposed to be in charge of to make sure that that money goes to the appropriate location. And the money that comes to us, we disperse it that $10 of the student activity fee, all of that money goes basically to an allocating budget, um, except for there's a small operating budget, but an allocating budget where we allocate the money for the clubs. Um, inside the USG governance, okay, that's the last point, we have the Club Funding Council and we have the Club Affairs Council. So Samia, uh, the club director, she runs the Club Affairs Council. That means any organization, uh, any club, that, that wants to change their constitution or they want to register an organization, any student wants to register an organization needs to go through the Club Affairs Council. They're going to submit a constitution to Hamilton or SAIL. Um, and once that's been submitted to SAIL, SAIL will send it to us, to USG, to the Club Affairs Council, and Sami and her team will review it. And if it doesn't break any rules, if it's not discriminating, and if it follows all the guidelines that they put and it's not replicating another club, then the Club Affairs Council will approve it. Um, after that, you have the Club Funding Council, which is run by Evie, uh, Evie Barthur Treasurer, which you will get to see in a moment. And she is the one who's gonna provide funding for all the clubs. So usually the way that it works is there's a budget process. Although um, last year, I believe we sent over $60,000 to reserves because clubs didn't use their budget. So we a little bit changed the structure of how it works. And we're going to talk, we're going to talk about this, I believe. Um, and it's more shaped now into uh, uh, grants. So that means every time you submit an event, you'll also submit a grant request. I believe we have a 100% uh, approval for grants. I guess if you can talk about that. So if you send uh, a grant request, it's going to go to her team. They meet once a week, they're going to approve it, and then they're going to tell the administration that you have money in your bank account to go forward with the event. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. Thanks, Aaron. Um, and just to touch upon what Aaron said, I just want to let you guys know that if you're interested in student government, um, a lot of us are student government representatives here today. And so if you have questions, feel free to stay back or just contact any of us. Our uh, social medias and contacts are all here, and this PowerPoint will be sent out so you guys don't ever have to take to each other. Um, so like Aaron said, my name is Samia Ahmed. I am the club director of the undergraduate student government. I am on Club Affairs Council and also the Gender Equity Task Force. Um, and on those councils, we work to represent the student body and help you guys in anything you guys need. I'm also on the Broken College Association that does deal with a lot of money stuff. But if you're interested in that, I can speak about that as well. And Evie? So hi, um, Evie, um, or Evie. I go by anything. I'm treasurer of, student, of undergrad student government, and I'm in charge of the Club Funding Council. Basically, I'm not going to say all grants are going to be accepted, will be approved, but we will say most. If, the, if you're spending a reasonable amount of money for a reasonable number of students, and it's like it makes sense, you will probably get it, but you need to submit the grant, grant request form, and you need to submit it properly. If you have questions, you're always welcome to email me. We do technically give budgets, but it's not, we, we capped it at $200, like um, Aaron said, because previously we would allocate a lot more money. And then if it's not used, no other club can use it. It's, it's pretty simple. I'm also on some of these other um, committees or, or councils. Um, also, we deal, I deal mostly with money, but also um, some policy, um, policy stuff. And in general, I'm here. You're always welcome to email me. I'm happy to speak to you, but there's also a step-by-step -step and things we try to make things as clear as possible and with instructions for how to submit things and how to get money. And if you read, the big thing I'm gonna say is very hard for people to please read things. And it's easy and we'll talk more after. And just touching upon that, um, all the information you guys have on purchasing and event planning actually is on the student government website. Um, this QR code leads directly to that page and I will send out the PowerPoint so you guys will have the QR code, but you can check it out right now. I do wanna quickly show you guys what that looks like because um, even after this, and if you have to leave early, a lot of the questions that you have may be answered here. So it tells you what you need for an event. It tells you how to open and register a club, how to apply for funding, what is an ERF, which is how you, the first step to making an event is filling out an event request form on Bulldog Connection and all the details about 
buying the categories it's all on here but we'll go through this um today so don't worry but i do want to let you guys know that the information that you guys um um need is actually on the student government website in case you're like where can i find this information later on um, but we'll go through this by detail at the end of the uh, presentation um student the graduate student government today uh louis dimelio is here with us he's a gso president so louis if you will sure so there are less than 3,000 of us graduate students, uh, whereas there are nearly 15,000 undergraduate students. Um, about 10 years ago, it used to be a little different where we had 11,000 undergrad and about seven, 8,000 graduate students. Um, so we're kind of going through a flux. What does that mean for GSO? That means if, that, if you're a graduate club, that means that funds are limited. And I have been a very strong advocate and uh, Aaron and Ikra and uh, the rest of USG, my peeps in USG know, um, I strongly encourage our graduate students to consider collaborating and mentoring our undergrads and working together, AKA you have more money. <laughs> so with that being said, um, as the GSO president, I try to help out. I work with uh, Dr. Raymond, Dr. Jackson, um, other uh, school officials, Jessica, um, who has known me since I was an undergrad. Um, so consider me a resource uh, as an individual. That's my actual cell phone number in the um, slide thingy. And um, yeah, so if, I don't know, uh, real quick, if there's any question or questions, but uh, what do you think? Uh, is that good? Yes, thank you so much. Um, and feel free to unmute yourself if you have a question right now or leave it in the chat. Um, and thank you for being with us here today, Louis. Yeah. But, um, next, I wanna go over to Dr. Hamilton Raymond. Hamilton, um, if you would like to introduce yourself. Yes, uh, thank you for this, guys. How is everybody doing? I mean, uh, my name is Hamilton Raymond. I'm the Associate Director for Social Activities and Involvement and Leadership Center, better known as SAIL. Pretty much my department oversees mainly all the administrative aspects of clubs um, in regards to registering a club, switching your e-board, so the government elections, um, special elections, uh, new and restart registrations, and anything else in between. Um, we advocate for the students, of course. Uh, we have some, some uh, programs that are ran out of our department, such as um, involvement fair, diversity fair, um and oh my gosh the retreat which has been on pause because of covid um and now our emerging leaders program will be the newest program that's coming out of our department which is slated to start in march um and it's pretty much it so you know i'm here to answer any questions that you guys have um, as we go into the program thanks again thanks hamilton um and now jessica bradley hi everybody um all right, thank you for following up, uh, coming today. I'm glad to follow Hamilton and Lewis and Aaron. Um, we all work together. Basically, I am the central depository admin. I work a lot of the time with Evie and Tom from GSO to do, excuse the life that's happening around me, um, to do a lot of the transactions and spend the money that they allocate to you. So I'm going to keep it very short and sweet so that we can answer some of the questions that I think you may have because I've been getting a ton of emails from a lot of the people that I see in the, in the uh, group today. So hopefully I can answer some of your questions, we can answer some of your questions and we can help you have a successful semester. Thank you, Jessica. And because Jessica, um, I know you have to head out soon. We will actually do a Q&A for Jessica beforehand so everyone could get all their money questions answered as soon as possible. Perfect. Um, but let's start with budgets and grants. So Evie, do you want to start off with this and then we can lead into Jessica with yeah, other um, I'm going to keep this part short. Just in general, budgets are usually given out in the fall. Um, it, as it is, budget at maximum is $200. If you have not, if you are not given a budget in the fall, I would just recommend you can request a budget of $0 and automatically apply for grants. With grants, there is no capping limit. Budgets, if I'm pretty sure, um, have to go through BCA. So even if you're only getting $200, it's going to take you, you have to wait till the next meeting, which is like, it happens about once a, once a month. So it would make the most sense if you did not request a budget, your club did not request a budget in the fall, to just say, hey, I want to submit grants, I'm requesting a budget of $0, and then submit, start submitting grants. 
grants, there's a grant request form. It's a Google form. I can drop it in the, the I'll drop it in the chat right after. Um, it's, there's really simple instructions, like what's, what's your name? What's your email? What's the date of the event? How many people? What are you planning to use the money for? And then the biggest thing is the last page is that I'm going to say almost the most, one of the most important parts. You give a detailed breakdown of what you plan to spend the money on. And then you give me quotes for the grant request. Breakdown means I'm ordering three pies of pizza from this store, and each pie of pizza is $20, and you're ordering three. Like, there's sections for it. There's, there's a sample breakdown. You just have to fill it in. But, and then I'm ordering three or five cans of Coke, and give me the pricing for that. It, don't just say food and drinks. Tell me what, what it is and the amount, the cost, and where you're getting it from. And in the quotes, you can't give me a, just one quote. The point of the quote is very simple. If you're ordering from a store, it's a picture. You can take a picture of the menu and send that to me. You just need something to confirm your pricing. And it's really important because people are like, oh, what do you need it? Why don't you trust me? Why don't you, whatever. I've had clubs come back to me after, after we've had our meetings because I said, fine, I, I, the numbers seem right. And they come back, actually, the pizza pie isn't $50, it's $20. And I'm saying, I cannot help you because your event is in less than a week. So we don't have time to meet again and give you more money. And you didn't check to make sure your numbers are right. And now you need money that I can't give you. So it's very important. You need to send me a quote for everything. If you're buying things from Amazon or Target, you can put the items in your cart and take a picture. Do not buy them, but you can take a picture. It's very simple. If it's from a speaker, you're having a speaker and you're, they've charged $200. They can send, they know how to send a quote or an invoice. They all know it if they've done it before. It's really simple, something with their name or whatever. I, and they say, I'm charging X amount of dollars for this service. This It's very simple, but please give me quotes for everything. People don't understand that, and that holds things up. And if I do not have the paperwork, your grant request will not be looked at at that meeting, and it may have to wait a week. And you don't realize that? I've, I, I've learned I have to be, I can't be nice about it and say, oh, yeah, and then we have issues. So you don't get the paperwork in properly, I'm sorry, it'll be pushed off. So just, if you do it, you don't realize how it's very simple, there are instructions, read instructions. And if you look at the USC website, Jessica and David, who was the treasurer before me, and I and some other people, we all spent, we spent our break. December, January, when everyone was off, that's what we did. We set detailed instructions of every single thing and how to do it. So it's like, I have no problem. I'm happy to answer questions, send me an email, whatever it is. But if you read that, most of your questions are answered there. It tells you exactly what you need to do. So please read it. I know no one likes to read, but that's very important. And Araya raised your hand, but I think Jessica, did you want to say something beforehand? No, please um, let Araya, let's answer Araya's question first. Thank you, Araya, go ahead. Hi, um, so one, it's Oria, but right now the person speaking is Sally. I'm just driving, so we're representing the same club. Um, in terms of VCA, uh, when is their next meeting? I can get you the calendar. They meet once a month. Um, I believe this, the next meeting is the second week of March, um, but I can absolutely send out the BCA calendar to everybody. It was just finalized this last week. Um, do you have something specific that you're bringing forward for an event? Uh, yes, I just, um, we're, my club was uh, planning another uh, Shabbat dinner in middle of March. And so food from our vendor is going to cost more than a thousand dollars because that's what kosher food costs for at least 100 students yes um so i just oh. want to make sure that it can get approved because i can't apparently split it between two different clubs no so i can possibly help with that um with the with the calendar um if you go into the usg website and you go under about you'll see over there a calendar and there's three calendars over there. I might actually even share my screen just to show this uh, this very quickly. Um, here are the calendars. So if you go under about and calendar, okay, it's going to take you to these three calendars. Okay. Um, so here are the calendars. You have the academic calendar, which gives you a breakdown of everything that happens throughout the semester. You have the USG governance and what is happening in USG. And you have the BC governance, which is where BCA meets. Everything that happens in BCA or anything that is related, okay, I personally put it inside, okay? So you can see over here that the policy council, for example, is on February 23rd, and the next BCA budget committee 
So the budget committee is the is the committee before we we provide the agenda to the BCA. So as long as you get it in before March eighth, I believe you you will be on the on the it's March generally two, It's generally two business days before, so we generally look look for the items the Friday before. Because what we want to do is give the budget committee time to review the items so that they can come up with questions or issues that they have. And then Aaron's right. What happens is the budget committee is then either recommended or not recommended to the board. And that's what sets the agenda for the final board meeting. So clearly, March 9th is the next meeting. When is your event? It will be March 11th. Okay. That's a little, there's not a lot of time in between. So if BCA approves the expenditure on March 9th, it's, it doesn't leave you much time to, for me to start the process to pay the vendor and for your event to happen because there's some pieces that are needed in between. Um, the first thing I'm gonna suggest, and I'm, it kind of goes back to, Aaron, did you finish by the way? Because I kind of just jumped in. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, just uh, yeah, I'll, I'll finish it with, if you want, add, click on the plus button on the bottom of the calendar and add it to your own calendar if you don't want to check it each time. It will be built into your Google calendar. Thank Jessica, you. back to you. So I was just, what I was trying, what I was going to say, uh, kind of going back to basis, because we jumped into budgets and grants first, and right. EV has chock full of information as far as what to submit and what not to submit and, and all these what I wanted to kind of just go back to and where I'm glad you brought up the question of BCA is kind of step one. Your groups register them are registered and are, are active and ready to do things. What's kind of step one of things? Step one of things is our event request forms in. So I think event request forms and grant requests should be a simultaneous process. Because what will happen is if there's an event that's upcoming, like March 11th, like you have an, having an event March 11th, right? Right. Have you gone to student government yet for funding? That's the first question I would have. Because Evie will know it from the funding perspective, and then we will look at it from the event request perspective. And then that helps me to help triage you to say, okay, it needs BCA approval. This is what I need on this day to get this ready for BCA so that we give you enough time to have your event and, and get things in place to pay for things. So I think kind of the step one of everything is you're a registered club, you're having events, all those events in, in the Bulldog Connection and getting the event requests in, which helps us to tell you what to do and how to process things, or at least raises questions that if we have questions, because clearly we do, we can, we can answer those questions in enough time. Um, and then separately, the grant request comes and that answers the budget questions for USG. So does that Got kind it. of, does that answer everybody's at least kind of step one, what should everyone do? Because I feel like we kind of jump into, well, you have to ask for money and which one comes first, the event comes first. It kind of should be simultaneous so that we can review the event, answer your questions. And at the same time, USG or GSO will ensure that you have the funding to move things forward. That would make it a lot easier. So does right. that help? Yes. Okay. Um, also, for this specific event, the food isn't the only purchase I need to make, right? So then the food list would go through to BCA, but other purchases that I need to make will go through regular USG grants. Well, this is where the event request is really important. So what happens from my perspective with the event request, you should list all of your expenses. So if you're spending, want to spend $100 on decorations, $300 on someone to come and speak, $1,000 on food, when that's all built into the event request, it helps me to say, okay, I need to follow up with this group to, group and make sure that they know this is how we purchase this. This is what I need to purchase this item. This is what they need to pay this person. This is what we need to do this thing. Like I said, where it's simultaneous is you're going to get that information to Evie because now Evie is going to look at the USG budget and determine how much they can give you for the actual event. So you might say, we need $1,500 to make this event successful. And the USG F Club Funding Council may only give you $1,000 because that's what they can give you right now. But they're going to ask you for everything. And right. then- Se uh, you know, separately, because Evie also sits on BCA, she'll look at me and say, hey, this group wants to spend $1,000 on an event. They need to be marked because they're going to have to come to BCA. So we kind of just now, you know, flag it to make sure that the group 
meets BCA before their event so that they can have the event and it's, it could be successful. BCA doesn't tell you yes or no, you can't have the event. BCA's role is just the expenditure because we have that spending cap of over 999. Anything over that would need to be approved. 999, 250 to 999 doesn't need that same approval. And just new for the spring, anything 250 and under is handled straight in central depository. It doesn't need to go into CUNY first. It doesn't need BCA. It doesn't need extra approval pieces. It just needs okay. a purchase form with me. So let's say, um, you know, you're going to go to Sushi Tokyo for that event and you're going to spend $100. You have a club purchase form with me. Do your budget, we make sure that it's there. We sign off on it. You go to Sushi Tokyo, get your sushi. You come back, you bring me the receipt. Every event, I want to let everybody know this, and this is all in that USG guide for events and purchasing. Every event requires a sign in sheet and a flyer. That's a key request. I know sometimes it doesn't always, it's not always, they're not always easy to get. And in the case that they, they a flyer wasn't made or a sign in sheet wasn't gotten, gotten at an event, you'd have to justify it and explain why, because I'm X, Y, and I don't know why you didn't do a sign-in sheet in an event. I can't advocate, I can't advocate for you. I can't answer, I'll always answer. Right. Um, so you want to um, make sure that the sign-in sheet, the flyer comes back with any receipts and that comes to me, but that's a whole separate payment process. I'm talking about just kind of from the beginning. So like I said, step one, event request. Event request denotes what happens next. Simultaneous is the grant request. So kind of A plus B plus C, it kind of just rolls through. Got it. Okay, okay. last follow-up No, question. please. Okay. Go ahead. Um, in cases where, let's say I'm going to Target to buy decorations or I'm going to a grocery store to buy some other supplies or color, uh, like utensils and stuff, Mm -hmm. I don't, I won't know how much that will cost because I won't know what it is that I'm specifically buying until I'm in that store. So Correct. when I submit a grant, I will normally just give my, I give an estimate. This is how much I normally spend within this stuff from past events. I'll be, I need around $300 to $400. Sometimes it comes out less than that, but I, I don't have like a, a list of what it is that I'm buying until I'm in the store. An estimate makes complete sense. And things like that, I, this has come up a lot and I wanna just be very clear about this. Target, supermarkets, small stores, generally are not vendors. And I'm, I'm gonna be quite honest with you. The vendor list that I've sent out to a number of students is poor, it's terrible. We're on the brink and the verge of coming back and being physically back on campus. What the issue is that we're having with the vendors is we have a number of vendors who want to be paid immediately that we can't do. Um, and they want, they're afraid to work with the college because they want to be paid. So what's happening is we used to have more vendors on the list. Now that I've reached out to a lot of the vendors and said, hey, we're back. The students are, are back on campus 70% and we're doing in-person events. Are you interested in working with us? A lot of them are not interested in working with us. Small businesses have been completely impacted by the COVID tremendously. Right. So what happens is our vendor list is shrinking. Where that comes into play is when you have student groups that want to go purchase decorations and go to Target and do all these things, they're not on the vendor list. So what that prompts is you need to do reimbursement. I don't love reimbursement. Not that I don't want to give you back your money, but they're not guaranteed. So what happens is let's say you go to Target and you lose the Target receipt and you say to me, I went to Target, I spent $150 of my own money, but I completely misplaced the receipt. Without the physical actual receipt, I can't do anything. We're not gonna be able to reimburse it. So I try to discourage people from using their own money. Excuse my two-year-old, who clearly doesn't understand Zoom etiquette. Um, but, uh, you know, she, um, you know, if we cannot provide original itemized receipts or a backup and justification reimbursements may not happen. So where that creates a challenge for the clubs is those vendors are not on the vendor list and you may not be able to reimburse me. How am I going to do this? So right. we're working through that. It's totally a challenge. So an answer to your question, 
when you go to USG, I think it's very smart that you give an estimate. You're not going to be able to say to Evie, I'm spending 201 56 because that's exactly what I know what I'm spending. It might be around 200 It might be around 250 but this is what we're allocating in the budget for X number of things. And then you will, where her assistance and my assistance is going to be, okay, they want to spend $250 in Target. They have the funding to do so. What's the best way for them to make that purchase? Is it easiest to do a reimbursement? And if it's easiest to do a reimbursement, we'll guide you that way. Is there another way to process things? I will guide you if there's another way to process something. So it depends on the transaction and every transaction is going to be different. So in answer to your question, I think you're doing it the right way. It's just going to be what you're doing and how we help you to process that is going to remain to be seen because we're still kind of working through every transaction. Does that answer your question a little bit? Yes, thank you. Okay. And so you can always reach out to Evie or myself if you're just not sure. I know a lot of groups do, and I have to also, Evie, just hold that hold out one second. I have a, a tremendous amount of emails. My volume has gone up completely since the spring semester. So I am responding to everyone as quickly as I can. If I don't respond to you, Mia Viava, who works in Central Depository as well, will respond. And Evie has even jumped in to respond to and help and kind of get these, these questions answered because we want you to be successful. We want to answer you in a timely manner because we know that a lot of things are time sensitive. So just please know you're all on my radar. Absolutely. Just trying to you know, piece it together. So Evie, get jump in. I just want to clarify a few things. First of all, um, things done in-house is under 250, not including 250, like $249.99. $250 is automatically, it's going through CUNY first. Um, just the other thing is going to be, if you are doing something that's going to require reimbursement, the point is if you're going to a restaurant or something like that, you can find a menu, you can, that's not, a good excuse for I need, I, I just want a general thing. That, give me a detailed breakdown. If you are going to a grocery store or Target, something where it is, I don't, you can't just say, hey, I want $200. You need to give me some reference because otherwise, like there's no anything, but it's not a set. You can say, hey, I want, we plan to get like plates are easy to find. You'll get in general something around this price. Give me an example of that. Give me an example of that. And then you say you want to get decorations and can you give me a $50 budget or a $20 budget for decoration? Something like that. I don't, you can say, this is around what we want to spend. Can you give me, so you, you're giving me an itemized list that'll come up to us at 200. So you say like, hey, but this isn't exact. Can you give me up to 250? And lots of times we will, even when a club asks for a specific amount, if it's something that's going to be from like Target or Amazon or whatever, in the club funding council, we'll even raise it and say, hey, we'll give them up to X amount of dollars because we know that Start, depending where you're getting from, prices are then arranged and change. We're not, it doesn't, certain things, yes, it's said, it's very obvious, and certain things are not. And it's okay to say that, but it's not to say, hey, can I have $500? And you're not telling me there's any anything. I've had so many, I've had clubs come back to me, $200 for the speaker. I'm like, give me a quote. And they said, actually, well, they'll do it for $100. That's something else. You can go back to your seat. You negotiate with vendors. And I'm look, restaurants are not going to, may or may not work with you. But speakers or other vendors, performers are definitely willing to work with you. We've, I've experienced, I used to be a treasurer of a club. I have experienced, we've drummed people down tremendously. So you, it's okay. It's very good to do that. And if, especially if you come and you, you request a grant and you want to pay them $500 and that seems like a lot of money. But if you say, Hey, originally they call, they wanted to charge me a thousand dollars. We got them down to 500. It's a lot easier to justify say like, Hey, you got them cut the price in half. So even though they may be a little bit expensive, okay, because they were really expensive and you re you got us on a sale price. And like, don't lie to me and say that, um, but it's, it's, it's something, be smart about your money. Thank you, Jessica and Evie. Um, and the vendor list is on Bulldog Connection, but I can email it out to everyone um, after this event. Next. I believe we had another question. Oh, was, there, was there another question? Sorry, I just thought of one more. Um, yeah, please. In Go terms ahead. of, in terms of uh, reimbursements, when stuff like that happens, for students that are going and purchasing uh, things from stores, is there like a tax exempt form that we can get through the school? Because I know that tax doesn't get reimbursed. Yes. Just follow up with me and we can send something. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Thanks, Jessica. Okay. 
So going back to finance question, the next item on our list is purchasing food for events, which you guys already kind of touched upon, but you guys want to give a quick uh, layout? Does, I really wanted to just follow up and see if anybody has any qu specific questions because the, the food at yeah. events has become a hot topic. <laughs> um, and like I said, because of the vendor list and it's, and it's, it's limitations. I want to say limitations. It does. And we have two hands raised. I'll get to it in two seconds. I want to say limitations. It doesn't mean that it will always be that way. It's a living, breathing list. So I know that because it, even though it's poor now, it may look great in the fall because it's a concerted effort between my, my office, USG, GSO, um, the upper administration and student affairs that that, li that list get, get better. It's, it's, a, it's a priority um, because we need to A, be culturally appropriate. We have 167 groups on our campus and the vendor list should refer, reflect a lot of the clubs on campus. Um, and also we need to have variety just in general they, you know, nobody wants to just eat pizza at events every day. I mean, college pizza at events, pretty boring, you know, so I get it. I mean, I think, you know, but at the same time, just be patient with us because we are at this gradual return and we just, we weren't ready, you know, and the vendor list clearly proves that I will say, it, you know, out loud. <laughs> so, but it is a priority. So, um, who wants to go first? I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Hannah first, and then we kind of go back. Or, or you want to just follow up? We have a lot of hand raised. All right, go ahead. You know, you go first. Go ahead. I'm just gonna go down the line. Or hi, um, I'm with the Link Club. So I had a question about purchase orders. So when yes. I make a purchase order and send it to you, do do you then are you then in touch with the stores, or do I then call the store and make the order? You would call the store and make the order. So you would give me the purchase form. What I do is do a budget check on Aaron to ensure that the funding is in place. I issue it a number and I will sign off on it. Once I sign off on it and send it back to you, either myself or Mia from my office. So the authorized signature on the bottom is, is one of us. Once um, we sign off on it, we get send it back to you. You give that to wherever you're ordering your food from. And, to, and that tells them it's funded. We know about it. We've seen it. And that's almost like your promise to pay. Hey, I'm promising to pay you. We need this order. This is the detail of it. We're promising to pay you. You give that to them. They complete the order. They give you a receipt. And then you're going to submit four things back to me. The non-PO voucher, which is the actual paperwork that issues the check to them. The receipt, because that tells me that it's been ordered and it's done, completed, and that's giving them, that's their way of telling me it's done your sign-in sheet and your flyer. Once those come back, we pay, we send it over to be paid and there's a check issued directly to them. No cash has to leave you, has to go through your fingers. You're not responsible for paying anyone. The groups are responsible for submitting paperwork. Does that answer your question? Oh, thank you. And just one more. So um, sure. when you say receipt, do you mean that they give back like the, the purchase order after they've seen it signed or can a receipt just be like like a traditional receipt that they give you at the end of an order that, that's like a traditional like a cash register receipt when you like if you're ordering pizza and they hand give you the receipt it should have the the name of the business the business itemized detail of what you ordered so five pizza pies the total amount of that and how it was paid oh, no, oh actually we'll just say the total amount because it hasn't been paid yet that's for reimbursement so they should, but they should be handing you something at the end because that's telling them this is done. We want to just be paid. Okay. Thank you so much. No problem. Next question. Um, just a quick thing. So we have something in the chat from Lisbeth about if your club was approved for a budget in fall 2022, uh, do you, you do need, uh, I'll leave it to Evie to explain a little bit more, but basically if you applied for a budget and you have money in your budget, you need to finish the money in your budget before you go to apply for a grant. OK, you can't apply for a grant before you use up the money in the budget. This is why I would highly, highly recommend also in the future, don't request the budget. OK, just request zero dollars and then you can apply for a grant for two thousand dollars. It doesn't really matter because you're not limited in the budget. You're going to be limited to your budget because that's what you get. Um, also, another quick uh, EB, go ahead, go ahead. Just on that two things. First of all, if you want you have two hundred dollars in your budget or whatever it is, and you want to spend more than that, you can. Put, submit a grant request form for more than that, but 
you say it's a total of five hundred dollars. I have two hundred dollars in my budget, so I'm requesting three hundred. You show us it's a total of five hundred, and you're telling us you have two hundred dollars in your budget and you need three hundred. Don't tell me it's three hundred because then I know that you have two hundred dollars in your budget, and I'm going to tell you that you will only give you one hundred dollars for it. The other thing I'm going to say is that um, please, I'm going to say keep track of your money. I'm now trying to go back through. Um, previous things because I don't know what clubs have in their budget and nobody clubs don't know what they have in their budget because they didn't keep track of their money so I don't know what's left over um and you can be asking for a thousand uh, like another three hundred dollars and you have a thousand dollars in your budget because you didn't spend it from whatever events last semester so why are you asking for more money but you don't know you have it and I don't know you have it and I'm trying to make sense out of things that happened five months ago the other thing is also if you cancel an event sorry this is really important and really 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 important if you cancel an event you must email me you must email Jen, Jessica and you must email Sempi. So the place where you submit an ERF, it'll say it in there. There'll be emails you can put in the discussion tab. You must say it is canceled or something has changed. Because otherwise, even if I gave you the money, I think it's good. If Jessica gave you the money, we think it's good. I gave you the money. We think the event happened. Jessica's going to go chasing the vendor trying to pay them for something that they never did. This has actually happened. So we need to know if something is canceled or something has changed. If not, I, I, I'm saying this to real quick. It is going to be if I find out this happened and you did not inform us. I don't care if you cancel it the day of. Just tell us. That's all I care about. If not, gonna, you, it'll be very hard for you to get money. Just I'm going to jump in for two quick seconds. I also sent an email. I, I don't want it. I, I guess for, for the purposes of this conversation, we've had a lot of challenges this year. And clearly you can hear some of the frustration. Uh, but at the same time, I don't want it to be kind of finger pointing like the clubs have to do this and you have to do this and you have to do this. Every group has has a responsibility and roles within their group. I'm going to always look to the treasurers and the president specifically because you're the ones who are responsible to sign off and be financially responsible for the groups. But I'm going to look at those two people for the most part to have an idea and a tracking of what you're spending, what you're requesting, what's been processed and what hasn't been. Um, so that's just kind of lending to EB's point. So I don't want to finger point and say, you have to and you must, and you do because we're all learning. This is clearly this doing this in this way and coming back on 70% and all this stuff in the last two years has been a complete learning curve for everyone. And how we do things is totally different than what we have done in the past. And I want to be compassionate and understanding and supportive at the same time, helping you be successful at, and, and then trying to come at it from a learning perspective. So I would like you to just pay attention to, sorry, Leah. Okay. Are you okay? Break my two-year-old, hard to tell. Um, but I want it to be from a learning perspective and I want it to be also something that you take away with you. So like I said, from my perspective, I will always email the president and treasurers because you're responsible for the finances of the club budgets. I did send out an email um, earlier this week with some due dates and deadlines. Please read through it. If you have questions, follow up and ask us. There's a lot of information, again, on the USG website, and there's going to be a lot of information coming from our office in the next couple of weeks. It may be a little overwhelming. Read through it, ask the questions, start from kind of step one, and then we're just, we're going to learn together. So I just want to, I want to come at it from a learning perspective and not just make everybody feel like, oh, well, if you don't do this, you're not going to get budget. And if you don't do this, you're not going to do it. If everybody does their part and you're handling your role in your club, you're going to be successful. Your treasurer at all times should know exactly what your available balance is, what they've submitted, what hasn't been paid yet. And if you're not sure, touch base with me. Jessica, where is this? And there's times where there's things that are being held up and it's beyond my control. I'll tell you flat out, this is what's going on. And this is what I need from you. And this is what I may need from the person that needs to be paid. So just follow up, follow up myself, follow up with Ivy and we'll help you make it, make it happen. Okay. And I just want to say, I'm, I'm sorry if I come across as harsh. I'm no, like, no, always, not at all. No, 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 not at all. Always, <laughs> always, oh, you, you can always email me. There are a lot of clubs. I've not at all. I'm helping them, but I, I realize certain things where you, we need to be tough because in the, at the end of the day, it ends up hurting the club if we are to be seen really nice. So I'll let this go. You, we let this go. We let that go. And then in the end of the day, it ends up hurting you. So sometimes a lot of rules need to be hard rules because otherwise it's at the end of the day, it's bad for you. And I agree. 
I agree. I don't want to say that I'm thinking that you're hard at this because she's not. Evie's very by the book and I appreciate that about you. I just want to make it clear that everybody has a role and our expectation is that if you just handle your role and stay in your lane, it will make everything work for everyone else. <laughs> so that was my point. Um, Both. Yeah, Aaron, did you want to say I was going to say, if anyone has any other questions for Jessica, because I know she has to leave for another meeting, mm -hmm. please ask now. Evie will still be here, but if you have yes. questions about such a depository stuff, just go ahead and ask now. Yes. Okay, and also, yeah, regarding the, the, the process, very quickly, okay, because I feel like we missed... Mm. Go ahead. Um, Okay, so regarding the process, there's there's a few different processes based on the amount of money that you're spending. Okay, so if you're spending uh, under um, if you're spending under two hundred and fifty, you're going to find a link over there in the BC Student Government website of what the process is for under two hundred and fifty. It's a little bit more flexible because it could be done in house. Jessica wants to elaborate; she's more than welcome to. If it's more than two hundred and fifty, it's a different process up to a thousand. Okay, if it's above that, okay above a thousand, it needs to be also checked off basically by the cabinet. Okay. So that means once Evie approves the money, it's going to come to the cabinet. Okay. And the executive cabinet will vote on it. And once it's been, it, once it's been approved by the cabinet, it's going to go to the BCA. The BCA is the Brooklyn College Association and they are going to approve it. It's supposed to be very clear on the website and what you need to click. So usually what you want to aim for is less than 250 if you can. If it's above, You'll see the process of how to do that, and it should be very straightforward. And everybody is very accessible with these with these stuff. Another quick thing about reimbursements, okay? Um, I believe in this. Jessica can probably elaborate on this as well. If you get reimbursed, a lot of times you're not going to get reimbursed with tax uh, unless you have a tax exempt form, okay? So just think about it when you're placing items, okay? I mean, in one in one way, it's maybe easier for you to ask for reimbursement, and you don't mind. I'll pay a hundred dollars. But you're not going to get that that tax. So think about that. And uh, yeah. Thanks, Aaron. We have a question from Lamek Fabian. Hi. Uh, yes. Uh, you guys can hear me good, right? Yes. Awesome. Okay. So I had um, I had a few questions about uh, I guess event request forms and like purchases and all that. So um, this, when doing when doing purchases, the those forms. Um, I'm, I haven't looked at the USC website, so I'm not sure if that information is there. Uh, we'll do so after after this meeting. But those forms are to be submitted through both the connections alongside the ER, the ERF, right? The purchase forms will be submitted to Central Depository, so it can either come directly to me, my email. You have my email because we've been going back and forth, or you can go to the general office email, which is cd at brooklyn.cuny.edu. Um, so the any of the purchase forms and items for purchasing would come to me. Thank you, Samia. Any of the grant request forms, USG forms will go to Evie. And then that's the simultaneous process to doing the items in Bulldog Connection. So you would, see, you would set up an event request form through Bulldog Connection in your portal. And then any subsequent forms would kind of, would go to me or Evie, depending on what they are. Grant request form is a Google form. There's a link that was dropped in the chat. It's on the USB website. It's floating around a lot of places. You can also email me. Um, I'll send it to you. It's really easy accessible and it's a Google form. So uh, if you've ever used a Google form, it's like question, answer, question, answer, question, answer, really basic, really simple. Okay, and the, and the, and the forms that go to Jessica, are those also Google form style or? Yes, on the USG website, they're in Bulldog Connection as well, but in on the USG website, the, what um, Samia had shared earlier, they're fillable. So there's a number of them that are fillable. You download them and you can email them to me PDF. Yes. They're, they're not Google Forms, but they're fillable PDF. So it's really, mm -hmm. it's also, it's really simple to fill in. Mm, okay, got it. Okay, thank you, Francis. I was really no confused about it. No, and if you're not, as you start to submit things, if you're not sure, just email, email me and I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through it, okay? Okay, awesome. Thank you. No problem. Grace, go ahead. Jump on in. Next question. Um, my question is, if we want to spend money on marketing initiatives, would it be the same process of applying for a grant as if we were hosting an event? 
I mean, in theory, yes, you you would go with a grant. Oh, you, you're gonna have to go through Evie, basically, yeah. regardless for that. Okay, to get money for that purpose. If the club funding council decides that they want to fund it, it could be anything. You could buy merch because you want to get merch, and it doesn't necessarily have to be for an event. Will Evie actually approve it? Who knows? Um, it, it's not actually her. It's the club funding council. So it's whoever was elected for the position of Senate and then selected for the club funding council approved by the Senate. So those six individuals will vote and they will decide if it's reasonable or not. Some clubs have a kind of like marketing budget and they're more than welcome to use it. Um, but yeah, uh, you'll, you'll have to probably explain what you wanna market and, and you can probably do that. Okay, got it. I just wanna make sure it was the same process. Yeah, basically anything where you need money that you do not have, you submit a grant request form. It does not have to be for an event. If the point is also do not submit an ERF for a purchase. If you just want to buy something that if you are planning to use it at a specific event, it is considered a it is considered for an event. So then you do, you submit it as an event. Like there, one of the questions on the ERF is this for is this a purchase, an event, or a trip? If if you are buying something for an event, it is an event. It's considered an event. You're using it at this event. But if you are buying something, if you have an office for something and you are buying a speaker for it, that would be a purchase. There are specific other things. Again, if you're buying merch. Also realize, legitimize, think about how much money you're spending on something and how many people is going to benefit. Just if you're asking for $500 for four people, realistically, you are not getting that. But if you're asking for $500 for 100 people, realize that's a lot more realistic. Just think think about that. But you can always ask. And then, I mean, we'll just say, you either get, you get yes, you get no, you'll say we'll give you or we'll give you less. Got it. Thank you. Thank you both. Richard? I don't think- Richard, can't hear you. Sorry, I forgot to unmute myself. Um, I want to know if we could use the budget for um, uh, professional services or like web hosting services for our website that we're going to be developing. Uh, can I use the budget for those areas? Um, I'll, I'll take that one. Um, yeah, in a way, yes, but also in other ways, uh, no. So let me try to explain it and break it down. Bulldog Connection is basically the services that we are purchasing from the student activity fee in order to use that to promote your own club, okay? So in theory, you would be hosted over there on Bulldog Connection. Now, between us, I know how terrible Bulldog Connection is, okay, which is why USG is pushing an initiative of actually replacing that vendor, okay, which is Campus Labs or Engage or however you want to call it. We know it as Bulldog Connection. We're replacing that. And in the upcoming meeting in, Fe in, in March 3rd, we're going to be voting on a replacement in something called Campus Groups. The new vendor, which hopefully will be up by June, okay, we're going to start working on that, June, July, okay, that new vendor will allow you to create websites on that platform. Okay, so if you do have a web hosting service, I would I, I would just say that you would have to legitimize why you want to have uh, why you want to pay a specific website for that purpose. And Evie can basically Evie and, and, and her team will basically look at it. And if they think that it's reasonable why you need the website, um, then sure. Uh, but if not, then you'll just be referred to the new platform where you're going to be able to build the website uh, regardless. <clears throat> I personally have been uh, offering uh, um, uh, websites, uh, templates. Um, so I know that Grace recently got, I think two days ago, a template of a Google website and I provided her a domain. So basically it looks like um, your club name dot Brooklyn dot CUNY dot club. So if you want a website like that, reach out to me, I'll send you a template, create your own website, enjoy. It doesn't cost anything. Um, and just responding to that, I'll also comment in the group. Yes, the, the, at the moment we have two vendors who, uh, who have placed quotes, okay, in order to replace Campus Labs. So right now we're using Campus Labs. That's what we're calling Builder Connection. The new uh, uh, group uh, that, that, that has submitted is uh, uh, Campus Groups, uh, which Macaulay is using and CCNY and uh, Rafter. Um, those two uh, uh, are gonna be the ones that we're gonna be debating in the tech fee committee. Um, and, and you'll get, we'll, we'll, we'll announce it once it's been purchased. Uh, Basically, both of these services are going to be a little bit different than Bulldog Connection. They're going to have a built-in app. So you might be seeing in the next semester an app called Brooklyn College Student Life. I didn't decide on a name, but whatever. Brooklyn Co College Student Life, and it will have all the functionality that the website has in a mobile app. 
with push notifications, with chat, so you can chat with other students and with groups and with clubs. Um, it, it should have an, a lot of nice functionality. So we'll, we'll talk about that later. Thanks, Aaron. One more thing. What about um, professional services? Like, um, I want to uh, take the eboard members to like uh, maybe uh, marketing professional service to learn about um, how to uh, use Google Analytics or stuff stuff like that that they have. Um, like, um, they they teach around like fifty dollars. There's like this area that teach around like fifty dollars per student. What about those type of services? Is it taking the students there or is it something that's web hosted that everybody can log in and view? Um, I, there's also, you can take them to the Manhattan location and uh, yeah, you, they sit down with the laptop and they learn by some uh, instructor. Jessica, I guess that this is gonna be under trips, right? Yeah, well, well now the, um, the protocol for trips is starting to lighten. Um, we will be starting to do things within the five boroughs. So if you, if clubs are looking to do things within the five boroughs, it will be considered um, domestic travel. It's a day trip, technically, it's not overnight. Um, and you would be allowed to do it. So if you come to EVI and, and request funding for that, that would be an allowable expense. Mm -hmm. I, I think they'd have to still submit an ERF. Right. Not necessarily. They're not oh. hosting it. So it would be oh. a day trip. It would be basically it would be a day trip form. Uh, they're also up on Bulldog Connection, uh, but we haven't had a request for any of them. So I've, I haven't really brought them up. Okay. Um, but I haven't brought um, yet. basically it would just be the group would be would have to just let us know where they're going, who's going. And there's waivers and there's things because there's liability once you leave the campus. Uh, but it is allowable. Absolutely. Okay. It's going to put that in right there. If you're doing trips, you're practically going to be spending a lot more money that per person than an event. So make sure you put good justification. It's just really important because if normally we'd allow $10 or $15 per person for an event, a trip, you're spending $50 at least. Make sure you have a really good justification because we're giving you three or four or five times the amount of money that we might give to a club for a regular event that's why what, there are two questions on it what like one is there is there an alternative cheaper thing for them you this is something on all the grant request forms and the other one is what like what do you need this money for and how does it align with your club's mission those are two very important like parts of the grant request form and it's really important because that is your justification and realistically if you want to come justify something at a, at, at a club funding council meeting you can tell me that certain things i might even tell the club leader that person needs the treasurer and or president to come for it sometimes because something may be controversial and maybe hard to get past. So we just think, re realize trips are gonna be probably more expensive and very likely you may have to come to a CFC meeting, club funding council meeting to justify that. Um, they're online, but like in person online during the time. But we can walk you through it. Doesn't it doesn't it doesn't seem as scary as it as, as, it, as it sounds? Uh, I have to hop off, but I I will take any other questions before if anybody has anything else that's coming. And if you it's not coming to you now and you still have questions, please feel free to email me. Again, I will get back to everyone. You're all on my radar. Maybe take me a little time, but I will respond to everyone's questions and try to get you to the right people or help you whatever way is necessary okay anything else before i head out all right have a great rest of your meeting thank you all um and i will be in touch with most of you very soon <laughs> bye thank you jessica. jessica no problem bye i'm going to continue on with the presentation in the sense i did have like some common questions that i found there i think we kind of touched upon this we talked about food Speakers, anything unique about speakers we should know, Evie? Uh, just the big thing about a speaker is this is something there's service instructors, step by step instructions, how to do it on the website. There's a specific form with step by step instructions on there also. First thing you need to do, you need basic information. There's like some basic paperwork you need to fill out. There's a W 9, an MPO, the flyer. You're going to get very familiar with these documents if you are the treasurer or, and or if you're the person doing the paperwork for the club. After the first or second time, it should be pretty simple. But before you submit this, you have to get the vendor's basic information 
their phone number, their address, it's, it's listed all there and send it to Central Depository. They, there's an email there. And the point is that basic information they have to input into CUNY to make them, to start the process of making them a vendor. So that is the first thing. So even if you don't, it's not like get the paperwork and then there's an then then send that email. It says that's the first step. And that's the, that's the really important. Like even if you don't, you don't, that's the first thing to do as soon as you know you're having a speaker. Even, I'm gonna say almost before, if you know you're having an event, you want to use a speaker, you can say, you can even reach out to Jessica and say like, hey, I haven't gotten this through the process yet, but I know we want to make them a speaker and here's the basic information. Like this way we can get that process started. Um, this is a very important thing that people also don't realize is there's an ERF you need to submit, there's the grant request form, and there's also not in every case, but in most cases, you still need to reach out to Jessica. That is a third step. And because it's not a form, it confuses people and they don't realize it's there. Paying a speaker, you can get, the ERF says the, the event is allowed to happen. The grant means if we give you the money, your the money is in your account, but you can the event may be allowed to happen and the money can be in your in your account. But if you don't reach out to Jessica and do that paperwork, then nobody is going to pay your speaker or nobody like the food will not be ordered for your event. Things like that. That is the third step that you need to make sure to do. And because it's not a document, people don't realize it's there. Um, Got it. Thanks, Evie. Um, and then moving on, Hamilton, I want to ask if you could talk a little bit on campus. I realized one other thing from there. With speakers, I'm warning off of that. In general, we cannot pay speakers or vendors that are not US based. So if they are from abroad or they whatever, and even though it's um, they can come on Zoom or things like that, it, there's a accounting issue and in general. I don't, there's maybe certain exceptions, but in general, you cannot pay a speaker that is not American, American based. So you know, if they're in America, if they're an American citizen and they have like an address whatever, and they're just on vacation or something like that somewhere else and they're gonna zoom in, it's, that probably is fine. What I'm saying is in general, if they are from England or Canada or Israel or China or Argentina, and they do not have an, they're not American based, it's, very, it's, we probably cannot pay them. So just keep that in mind. And it's a question I've gotten emails about. Thanks for that reminder, Evie. Um, and then, oh, Hannah says, do I send the grant request form to Jessica? This is, yeah, was it that I send it to Jessica as a third step? No, um, just, uh, sending an email to Jessica is the third step. Grant request form, you submit it. It's a form and it's gonna come to me basically. You press on the link, you fill out all the information and that comes to me. Um, depending what it is, you either reach out to Jessica before that's there, before that's in, or most of the time afterwards. Um, and that's the step of now my event has been approved. I have the money. Now I want to work on paying the person or ordering the food. You get that she's the person. Grant, it, the grant request is I want money. Jessica is take the, take the money that's now in your account that you got from the grant request. Um, and give it to whoever needs to be paid. Awesome. Thanks, Evie. Um, yes, so Hamilton, I wanted to ask if you could speak a little about on-campus events, specifically um, the spaces students can use and any kind of COVID regulations or restrictions about that. Yeah, uh, no problem. Thank you uh, for this. So as far as, as on-campus events, sorry for the notice. As far as on-campus events, right now they're they're being conducted for events that are supposed that are to be in person. We ask that it be the events be submitted at least three to four weeks, uh, hopefully four weeks prior to the day of the event. Um, reason being is because space is very limited at this point. Um, we are we are utilizing this, the student center, but the student center is understaffed at the moment. So uh, the earlier you put in your event request, the um, the more, the more likely you'll be able to get your, your space uh, reserved for you. You can also get space from other departments within the school. It's just that once you submit the ERF, you have to also submit the approval from the department. So uh, Fierce and oftentimes does this. There, uh, there's a club that's having a, a, um, a theater performance, but they're having a Fierce team. They submitted the ERF and they submitted the approval that they got from the department head saying that they can conduct the event um, uh, you know, at, at that space. Um, also, if your event is on Zoom, um, 
just we ask to be submitted two weeks in advance. And if your event is also having a paying portion, whether it's on Zoom or in person, we ask for it to be submitted four weeks because paying someone takes some time, as you guys already have heard um, from both Jessica and Evie. Uh, but that's pretty much it. There's no more RRB process. Well, there is an RB process, but now it falls under VP Jackson. Uh, previously, it fell under the provost. So VP Jackson has the authority to approve all uh, and on campus events. If you're having someone that's going to present at the campus at or the on campus or on Zoom, please submit the, the bio. The club's ERF cannot move forward to approval without the bio from the individual that's presenting. Um, and that's pretty much all I have. Any questions? No. Um, and I want to insert, like to build on Hamilton that if you are trying to do an in-person event at Student Center and you're not, there's gonna be a bunch of rooms that are listed on that ERF, the event request forms that's on both that connection. If you're not sure what they look like, the Student Center is open. You guys can come and take a look at these rooms so you know what you're working with. But like Hamilton said, they are limited. So you do wanna um, get a head start. But thank you, Hamilton. Yeah. And I like to add as a final point, there are also capacity limits to each room and the capacity limits are not as they were pre-COVID. So for example, one of the rooms, if they go 90 people, they can only have about uh, 55 to 60 um, to allow the social distancing aspect. So be bear in mind, keep that in mind as well. Thank you, Hamilton. And also another reminder, individually packaged food is still the COVID regulation. Yeah, individual packaged foods and, and also uh, the vendor is not allowed to enter the building. So you have to make some sort of, of um, agreement with the delivery person to pick up the food outside of the building and bring it upstairs. The, the delivery person is not allowed inside the student center. Thank you. And um, yeah, so far I've ha I haven't had a lot of clubs complaining about that. You can just have them be right in front of the student center and you just step out and bring it all back in. So, but if you, again, if you have questions, you guys can email Dr. Raymond or myself about that. Um, and then moving on to off-campus events, um, any rules on that, Hamilton, that we should know? Yeah, on and off-campus events have to be, an ERF has to be submitted. Um, if you're having an off-campus event and you're utilizing the club's name, you have to understand that the club is affiliated with Brooklyn College, so you have to adhere to all the Brooklyn College rules. Uh, if you have an event, um, I don't know, if you bring everybody to the movie theater, you have to explain how everybody's going to have a COVID protocol, um, how that's going to be implemented, um, and essentially just follow all the all the rules under the student guidebook in Brooklyn College. If you decide to go with the club and go to the park and never submit an ERF, that, does, that, that goes under as an unsanctioned event. So if anything is to happen at an event, Brooklyn College is not held re responsible for anything at that event because an ERF was not submitted. Thank you, Hamilton. And we have a few questions in the chat. So Amara asks, where can she see what rooms are available for in-person events? I, so I all the rooms, them. okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll just share my screen immediately so people can see it. Um, so here is, oops, one second. Okay, so if you go into Bulldog Connection, you're gonna see a lot of links. And I think that this is actually very helpful. So if you scroll a little bit down, I know that it's not in the most convenient place, but as I said, this is only temporarily until we get the new vendor, uh, but you can see over here, campus links, okay? Um, and you're gonna see over here a lot of stuff. So if you go over here into Student Center uh, Room Availability Real Time, it's gonna open for you a new page. Then you can go over here into, let's go say Tuesday, and you're gonna see that the Glenwood Lounge is taken between 12 to 215. So that is something that you can just see all of the um, the resource scheduler. Um, now, if, if you don't know what I'm talking about over here and you don't know what is the main page in Bulldog Connection, then at least in, through the event request form. So when you're submitting something new, an event request, through that process, you're gonna see over there the option to see all these rooms, okay, and detailed uh, um, uh, instructions. So the way that it's gonna work, I don't know if I can even show, uh, well, I guess, we'll, are we doing that at any point, Sami? Are we showing how to fill out an event request form or is that not happening today? Um, it will happen, it will happen today, at the end, yeah. Okay, so we'll wait with that. But through the event request form, you're gonna see a link to uh, there's going to be a link to exactly the capacity that you have for each room. You're going to you're, you're going to see the set of like let's go say uh, um, 
circle tables or I don't know, auditorium style in each room and what, what is being provided and what you can request. And you'll see also a link for the availability. All of it is through the event request form. So don't worry, while you're filling out the event request form, you're gonna see that over there. Does that ask you a question, Amara? Yeah, um, what Aaron showed um, is in real time. So that is helpful. And in the event request form, um, when you see it, it's, it'll, it'll make sense when you see it, but um, that scheduler is the most useful tool you can use. But Lamek asked the question, how many weeks in advance should we submit the event request form and purchase forms for in-person events? And Lamek, I have a question. Are you speaking about on-campus in-person events? Okay, on campus, so yeah, Hamilton. Um, how many weeks in advance? Sorry, so um, the timeline for on campus is we ask four weeks before the event. Um, so bear in mind, events nine out of 10 times will be approved. The only way an event will not be approved is if the event is submitted 24 hours before the date of the event, if the event ER is submitted the day of the event, um, and if the clubs do not respond to questions that are being asked, it's very important that you guys look at the discussion post and see what questions are being asked by your, your liaison. Oftentimes, it's a simple message about uh, needing some clarification. Um, so be sure to look at that. I also understand that from, from Evie and Aaron, that when we, are, when we started putting new um, eboard members, they were not able to see the events that are posted prior to them getting on, on the eboard. That's unfortunately something that's, that's dealing with the, um, the system that we have, uh, but I am aware of that and Cynthia is aware of that. Uh, so if you are a new club member that's, that's joined during special elections and you are able to see an event, just reach out to me and, uh, and we'll get to the bottom of it. Thank you, Hamilton. And for off-campus events? Off-campus events, we ask for a four-week period as well. It's because we want to make sure, uh, one, that all protocols are being followed for building college and student safety, of course. Thank you. And in general, Lamek, the sooner, like, the sooner you know that, like, almost like the second you know that you're trying to plan an event, I would start working on these forms. And like we mentioned before, uh, when it comes to purchase forms and event request forms or, like, grant request forms, to do them all at the same time, right? Yeah. yeah. That's what I need to clarify yeah. because I don't know if you're using the terms wrong. A purchase form is after you have gotten the grant, you submit a grant request form, you got the money. A purchase form is, first of all, only for if you're spending less than $250, and that is only for a registered vendor. Okay. But that can be filled out usually, let's say the week of. It's, it's possible for even less. It's, it, that's really simple. Um, but that's like a that's one of the la later things you're gonna do. Um, if you mean something else, like a grant, the grant request form is supposed to be done about the same time as the ERF. In general, turnaround for that is gonna be pretty quick. We usually meet on Tuesdays. Agenda is set on Monday though, so the agenda is set on Monday. And if there are any questions, the point is you can submit it Monday morning. But if I have questions and you're missing something and you don't get it back to me by the five o'clock deadline, it's like hard hard cut off at five o'clock on Monday because I need to set the agenda. And if you do not have all the correct information, I have questions that you do not answer, it is being pushed off till the next week. And the other thing is great that we can give you the money, but then you still have to fill out all the paperwork that goes into paying the vendor. So don't wait. Oh, it, it's a it, turnaround time for CSC is really quick. I can wait another week or two. Um, don't do that. Submit it the same time as the ERF. Um, just information. Femsi meets on Fridays. Um, but liaison, I don't know if anyone mentioned this. There's a liaison. Each club has a liaison. They will look at it. They will, will review your ERF before it goes to Femsi. If the liaison did not look at it and approve it, Femsi will not touch it. Okay? So that means, like, that's great. You submit it. Femsi's meeting Friday. If you submit something, Thursday night, the liaison probably has not had time to look at it. It's going to be pushed off till the next week. Even Thursday morning, like I, every liaison is different. I can't give you exact timings, but so re, submit it as soon as you can. And don't say, hey, well, technically I'm by the deadline. You don't know what may come up and then things will be pushed off. And you don't know 
if we have questions and also be responsive. If you don't respond, I've had clubs say, hey, but I submitted it a month ago. That's great, but there were questions and you never responded to the question. So every week it just kept being put off. And that's not on, uh, we reviewed it until whatever point and then you didn't respond and then we're, we're waiting on you. So check your emails, sometimes even check your spam. Look at the discussion. By the way, the other thing is with ERFs, you'll see there's a discussion post tab below that um, you can, if you if something happens, you want to write anything in there, you can write in there and 70 different people may ask you questions based on it. So that's something else to keep an eye out for and make sure to respond to. Thank you, Evie. Um, any question before we move back to the presentation? Okay, so um, to move on, I want to talk about virtual events real quick. Um, Hamilton did already mention uh, like the process, you do an event request form. Is, uh, because these are virtual, they're a bit easier so you could do them two weeks in advance. However, if you are trying to like pay a speaker or purchase something for these events, you wanna do them at least four weeks in advance. And Evie already kind of explained the process, the information also on the website. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, but you guys are, I think, you, uh, used to virtual events because we did a workshop on this last semester um, and you guys are kind of used to it. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, timeline, we also kind of went through. Hamilton did explain that, like, if you're doing an in-person event, you want to do this three to four weeks prior to the event. You want to submit the ERF form. If it's Zoom, two weeks, unless you're paying, then you want to do this four weeks in advance. Um, if you are doing, um, you know, and events with major purchases, you wanna do them super advanced, maybe in four to six weeks, because you have to wait on things like BCA or some councils. And so you wanna plan as soon as possible and accordingly. And if you're not sure if you have enough time, you have our emails, which I'll give at the end of the presentation again, feel free to ask, okay? And um, in general, all this information is on that BC Eastern Government website. Blackout days, um, I'll just quickly speak on them. They're just times where uh, student organizations cannot have events. And so these are typically when the college is not in session. So spring break and like summer when we have no classes, essentially when there is no classes um, on campus or classes in general, you should not be holding a club event. Hamilton, is there anything else that you'd like to add on this? Yeah, so the only time you, uh, you can be subjected to uh, submitting an, uh, an event during this time period is with an um, exemption form. Exemption form is literally just justification as to why the event has fallen on one of those two, uh, a date that falls in one of those two time periods. Um, and that gets reviewed by SMT and if SMT approves your exemption, then this event can happen. But by just submitting it without that, the event will not get approved. Thank you, Hamilton. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, important dates for you guys to remember. So this QR code does take you to the BC Student Government website with these dates on it. Um, club registration, um, this is a time period, like a lot of new clubs are, have come and asked about, you know, starting up, you know, like a party club. So how would that process go? I can walk you through it. Um, all this information is also on that BC Student Government website. Um, and usually you go through Hamilton and Sale, and then if it's a constitution that needs to be reviewed, the Club Affairs Council, which I um, help lead, kind of goes through it, but the time is now, okay? And if you have questions, feel free to ask. But um, this is also, if you're restarting a club, this is also the time to do this. And the club registration period for next semester, so in fall 2022, would be in this April to May period, you would have to hold elections. And usually when you have a new e-board, you make them do spark training, which is on your Blackboard, and that would be in June 30th. That's the deadline for it. But we will send emails about the last two towards the end of the semester because that's usually when you guys are more concerned about it. Um, but if you have any questions about starting a new club or restarting a club that has died out, feel free to ask. That goes for undergraduate student government and for GSO as well. Um, if you guys have any, any other questions, feel free to ask right now. I will remind you guys that this PowerPoint um, will be sent out as well as the recording. Um, as for like running through an event request form and um, a grant request form and all these forms we talked about, I think a better solution would actually be for Evie and I to record these and upload these to our YouTube channel so we can actually share them with you guys and you guys can go back to it again and again. Um, so, and I know you guys have been on here for a while. So we'll do that instead and I'll 
include that in email and I'll and put it in on the chat and our Instagram instead. Is that fine, Aaron? Yep, all right. that sounds good. Sounds good. And any other questions you guys have? Thank you all for being here, by the way. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask. No problem, Hannah. But thank you guys all for coming. I hope you guys found this helpful and I hope this makes it easy for you guys for the rest of the semester. Um, if you guys have any questions, we're always here. We're in the student center and if you guys ever want to see us in person, like do a little office hours or do a little meeting, feel free to email us. We will love to meet you guys and see you guys and help you guys out in any way, shape or form. But thank you all for coming. Thank you so much for this, everybody. Thank you. For Thank you, night. Hamilton, for coming. Um, no worries. Uh, Amara, your club is locked out of your club room. Um, Hamilton, would you happen to know? Yeah. I'm sorry? Oh, oh, any uh, I, I can answer that, I think. Um, th there's only, at the moment, there's no club rooms, unless, uh, Hamilton, if you want to correct me on that, the last I talked with VP Jackson yesterday, he said that there's no club rooms available at, the, at, at this point, and they're not planning on opening it. I, I don't know if that's going to change throughout the semester. Hamilton, do you have any input on that? Yeah, no, it's not changing this semester. There is no club rooms that's going to be available for student club semester. However, if you have items in your club room that you need to pick up, just contact student government and schedule a time with them to, to come pick it up. But as of now, uh, club meetings are, are virtual this semester as well. Thank you, Hamilton and Aaron. Yeah, um, we have we have group chats. I know we're not a lot of people left, but uh, you're probably in the group chat because that's how you got over here in the first place. But follow up if you need anything. Uh, we'll try to give you the group chats as well. Um, and yeah, and and there's hopefully updates coming to the Bulldog connection and everything soon. So yep. Hey, can I throw in one last question in there? Sure. That's for Hamilton. Uh, to submit that code form that you were talking about, how what's the process of that again? I'm sorry, submit which form? Uh, the COVID forum, if the event is hosted for more than whatever amount of people. So there isn't actually COVID form. You just have to submit what's called an ERF, event request form, and that's through Bulldog Connection. Um, and if you're having an event that's, uh, let's say, with a lot of individuals, we will ask you sometimes to just clarify how you're going to adhere to the COVID protocols to ensure that everybody has social distancing, masks, sanitizers, you know, uh, prepackaged food, things of that nature. But there is a separate COVID form that you have to fill out. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, no problem. By the way, event request form, very simple. It's just, you click on create event under your manage portal and, and, and build a connection. It's literally creating an event. That's the event request form. It's not a really, it's not a specialized form. It's just click and create event and follow through. Yeah, I think we're good. I'm going to stop right. the recording. Thanks, sure. Hamilton. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Sorry, enjoy.